Hello again, everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play of another Sierra game. In order to verify your legal ownership, please use your King's Quest IV manual to answer the following question. On page four, what is the third word of the third paragraph? Ah, uh, great. We start off with copy protection. Game! Alright, well, let's, uh, let's see. That was the, uh, page four, third word, uh, third paragraph... That would be missed. Sierra presents copyright 1988 blah blah blah. Is this your first time playing King's Quest 4? Ah, we'll lie. Yes, it is. And we get glorious, glorious Roland audio. I wonder, I kind of wonder which uh, Sierra game was the first one to do this. Not sure. I don't. I don't think King's Quest Three had any. And I didn't set it up to do so anyway, because I assumed it didn't. Executive producer Ken Williams, directed by Roberta Williams, designed by Roberta Williams. Music composed and performed by William Goldstein, programmed by Ken Cox. Chain Fulmer. Animation by Carolee Hawksdaughter. Jerry Moore. Background scenes by William Skirvin. Game system by Jeff Stevenson and Robert Heitman. Game system by Pablo Chenis and Stuart Goldstein. With the return of his long lost son Alexander and the rescue of his daughter. Rosala from the terrible dragon, old King Graham decides it's time to pass on his adventurer's hat to younger blood. Gee, thanks, Dad. All we get is a stinking hat. He flings the battered hat towards his children while his wife, Queen Valanis, proudly looks on. I was totally hoping for a car, Dad. The hat arches through the air. Suddenly, King Graham experiences a terrible squeezing pain in his chest. Assassin! Assassin! Help me! He rasps. The adventurer's hat lies unclaimed upon the floor, forgotten. Well, at least he took his crown off. That, that kind of sucked to lay in bed with that heavy thing on. Oh, everyone's so sad. King Graham lies weakly in bed, Father Death hovering near- Father Death? Father Death? Grief suddenly overwhelming her, Rosala runs from the room. Uh, um, you're not supposed to sit on the throne there, lady. Oh, Father, she sobs. You're still young! Ah, oh, damn it. Do you really mean that? A soft voice asks. Rosala looks up and sees no one. Who's speaking to me? Oh, God, it's the ghosts again! The animation in this uh, game is so much better than the previous one. I am, the magic. The, the voice says. Look in the magic mirror. Yeah, yeah, you, can, you can go look in the mirror, Rosala. Rosala sees an image in the mirror. Who are you? She queries. I'm just a figment of your imagination. I think something in that dragon's breath got to your head. I'm sorry, your dad's gonna die, so, uh, just get over it already. I am the Fairy Queen Genesta. In my land of Tamir, there is a remarkable tree. This tiny tree needs 100 years to bear a single fruit. That seems like a bad evolutionary path. But this is no ordinary fruit, for if a person were to eat it, they would find that good health and well-being would be theirs for many years. Avoid where prohibited. Rosal is much heartened by this news. Where is the land of Tamir? I'll get ready to walk there right away. Janesta smiles. Tamir is very far away, but with my magic I can bring you here. Just take these magic mushrooms first. They'll transport you to a land far, far away. Rosala senses that there is more to the story. But I suppose there are some problems? After all, we are in a Sierra adventure game. 
Again, Janesta smiles. Yes, you are correct, Rosala. If you are willing to come to Tamir, I will explain the situation. Um, can we get a, the explanation before I come? However, once I bring you here, I can't send you back. You will have to help me first. Hmm. Confused, Russell says, I don't know. What if I can't help you or find the tree? I mean, I'm just a girl! Janesta pleads, You must decide now, Russell. My powers are growing weaker by the minute. See? There's even snow in the magic mirror! Now the fairy is but a faint glimmer and her voice barely audible. If you care for your father, say yes now! And suddenly she's gone. Oh, that's that's a harsh thing to say. If you care for your father. Yes! Oh, well, I guess she does. Poof! Uh, the smoke didn't completely cover her. Uh, why didn't you just teleport us to wherever you were, fairy lady? The lovely fairy speaks. I am the fairy Janesta. Welcome to Tamir. These are my hand fairies. Lily and Millie. Rosa looks awestruck at the fairy. She is stunningly beautiful, but still there is a certain sadness to her. You actually look a lot like me, fairy lady. Finally, Rosala speaks. I know you would like to help me in... I know you would like me to help you in some way, but I don't know how I could help a fairy. Janesta looks sadder than ever. You're wrong, Rosala. You see, I'm losing my magical powers. Yesterday, as I was strolling through the magical woods... Lalat the... ah. The fairy sighs. She yanked it from my neck and raced away, screeching with laughter. Immediately, I felt my powers diminishing and my body weakening. I will die in 24 hours if my talisman is not returned. That, that seems like a... poor phylactery to, to put your uh, um, power into if you, you keep it on you and, and some evil fairy can just come by and steal it from you. Intently, Janesta looks at Rosala. Lalat is very evil and will use the talisman to bring more evil to Tamir. Now I fear it will contaminate my whole country. N not like there's many people living here. Further, I cannot send you home without my talisman. Oh, it seems like a bad plan here, lady. Rosala is unsure as to what she can do. Meekly, she asks, I want to help, but how? After all, I'm just a girl! You can do, do more than you think, Rosala, Janesta assures her. I believe you will be able to penetrate Lalat's domain. I'm just going to leave that uh, thought hanging there. Suddenly, Rosala remembers the tiny tree. Can you tell me where to find the magic fruit? Nope, you'll have to find that on your own. Remorsefully, Janesta looks at Rosala. It will not be easy to reach the tree. It grows on a tiny island within a vast swamp on the other side of the Great Mountains. Well, then why didn't you teleport me here? Bravely fighting back tears, Rosala says... I will help you in any way I can, Janesta. How can I find Lalat? Just just look for the evil stain on my land. That bitch stole my talisman! Go kill her! The beautiful fairy points eastward. Lalat's castle overlooks Tamir from the Great Mountains. Some of these take really long time to clear, and others go quickly. Janesta looks weaker as she says, there is not much more I can do, Rosala. As it is, it will be difficult for me to fly home again. One thing I must do for you, though. I shall disguise you as a peasant girl so as not to ex attract attention. No, not my... not my beautiful... white lace dress. This was expensive. Aww, this is like from Sears or something. Th thank you, Janesta. I think, Rosala stammers. It would be better for you, the fairy says. Well, I must be off while I can still fly. I know you can do it. Goodbye. Good luck. I'm going to go find some other people just in case you fail. And here we are on the shores of a foreign land with no real idea of what to do. Well, you're on your own, Rosala. Well, shucks. And here we are. You know, I think it's a good idea to just get an initial save. Wait, fairy lady, come back! 
Hey, all right. We don't have to uh, actually. T oh. You make a tasty morsel for that hungry shark. Aww. Uh, where's my death music? No death music? Is there really no death music? Roberta says, Thank you for playing King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosala. Next time, be more careful. Oh, alright, fine. Alright, let's not... Let's not go swimming. Oh, I, surely I could survive that, right? That last step was a doozy! Curse you, game. I love that death low. That's one of my favorites. Alright. Now let's actually see what we can do about... I don't know. Finding this magical fruit and, and murdering this evil fairy. I mean, um... um, Finding the talisman and, and being very nice to the fairy. Ooh, hello. A cold river carves its way through this lush, flowery, flowery meadow. Look, unicorn. You see a beautiful wild unicorn in the meadow. Its coat is dapple gray, and its wonderful horn shines like gold. The unicorn shies at your approach and trots away. Rosala isn't a virgin? Oh, princess, I'm shocked at you. You're not even married. They really improved the uh, animation in this game, though. Come here, horsey. I just want to play with you. Oh, I'm a nice sort of virgin. Come on. Oh, stupid unicorn. You see a crude mine shaft in the midst of this forest of pine trees. Really? It's crude? Well, let's go inside. Maybe we'll die. Hello, anybody home? You've encountered a group of small men working in this diamond mine. They're not too friendly, though, as one of them forcefully tells you to leave the premises. Aww. They just kicked me out. That was rude. You're roaming through a dense forest. Look. Bird. I think I see a little birdie down there. Helps if I spell it right. A pretty robin pulls hungrily at a long earthworm. Come here, birdie. Don't you want to say hi to me, Princess Rosala? I'm a princess after all. Nope. Alright, well, fine. I'm going to steal your worm. Wow, I got two points for getting a worm. That's, uh, that's great. It's, that's just fantastic. Ooh. You are walking through a forest thick with pine trees. A nearby river rushes westward from the distant mountain range. In the distance, you see a large house. Well, let's go ahead and see the, uh, um... Actually, let's, uh, save it, just in case this river kills me. Okay, it does not. Good. Um, can I get up there? No? Ah, there we go. Hey, the river didn't kill me. Ooh! That is, uh, kind of a run-down house. Indeed, this is a spooky old house. It looks as if no one has lived here for many years. Flanking the old house on both sides is a run-down cemetery. A thick forest looms all around, including some branches that look like claws. Well, clearly no one lives here, so uh, let's go inside. Hmm. Well, let's look around. This is the entry room of the old house. Downstairs, you see two open doorways, and upstairs, you see an additional two doorways. The room is cobwebbed and dusty, with wallpaper peeling from the walls. They have wallpaper? I wonder if I can click to look at things. Nope. Look. Pictures. You notice two interesting portraits above the downstairs doorways. One of a middle-aged woman, and the other of a young man. Do you wonder who they are? See, people, this is why you should always label pictures of people. So when your house is run down and some crazy lady comes in, um, she'll know who they are. Uh, look, clock. The old grandfather clock sits in the corner. With each swing of its pendulum, time relentlessly marches on. 
Uh, check time. Time? The time is 8.10 a.m. Tamir time! Oh man, I am so jet-lagged. Well, let's see what's in here. This uh, looks kind of like uh, Mananan's uh, dining room. This old dining room has seen better days. The long table is littered with crumbs and dust, and against the wall, the empty hutch is covered with cobwebs. Clean? Try another way to say that. No, damn it! Clean room. Try another way to say that. Screw you, game! Open hutch. You can't do that now. Well, screw you then. Let's see what's through here. The old c kitchen is <clears throat> quite bare. The fireplace has been cold for years. How can you tell that? And the dusty pantry is empty but for old crumbs. I wonder if I can get anything in here. Um, let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, I am not seeing anything obvious. Can I... Whoops. Can I get that, uh... Candle? Get... Candle? You can't get that. Alright, well, screw you then, game. I'm out of here. With my hair of flaxen. It's more of just... Straw. Considering the disarray of the rest of the house, the parlor looks in relatively good order. However, the fireplace is cold and unused, the bookshelves are almost bare, and the old furnishings are dusty. Look. Books. You examine the few remaining books on the bookshelves. Only one catches your attention. It is entitled, The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. Who the heck is William Shakespeare in this world? Uh, get book? You remove the Shakespeare book from your the shelf and carry it with you. Excellent. Uh, can we uh, take a look at our inventory? Shakespeare book. Worm. Look. Worm. Ooh, it's a worm. Look. Book. I, I can't read the title. Why is there a lion on the cover? Shakespeare book. Look. Picture. An interesting portrait of a young girl hangs above the fireplace. You gaze at it intently, and notice that her eyes seem to stare at the left wall of the parlor. Alright, well... Look... Wall. You examine the left wall very closely, and notice a little latch! Flip... Latch. You flip the latch in the wall, and behold! You have discovered a secret door! Sweet! Oh. Uh-oh. Well, let's look around. You found a secret tower. Narrow steps spiral dizzying, dizzyingly upward, all of two floors. You notice a shovel leaning against the wall. All right, well, take shovel. I'm sure this will fit in my pocket. It did. Look, shovel. Great, that's, that's a shovel. Well, I think that this calls for a save. I mean, really, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, wow! Way to go, just jumping off the stairs there, Rosala. I'm impressed. Ah! Oh! Oh. Well, at least we make a nice corpse. Next time, be more careful. And we will, but that will be next time. See you in the next episode, everyone.